everyone. Welcome to uh, this DAMCO hosted webinar uh, covering the topic of uh, Director Store. My name is uh, Jens Sode. I'm one of two presenters today and I am very excited and very pleased to uh, have you joining this webinar. Um, my background for doing this is 20 years in the industry. Uh, I have worked uh, across many geographies being Asia, Europe and USA and I have also had the pleasure of working with a number of leading brands, uh, which we would like to share with you some of those insights today. Uh, and let me just have uh, Heino introduce himself as we move on to today's agenda. Good morning, good afternoon everybody. Uh, my name is Heino Kempis. I'm, uh, I'm uh, in the industry for uh, approximately 10 years now. Um, um, always been in the space between IT and business and been involved with a lot of customer implementations. Thank you, Heino. And um, with that, let's take a look at uh, today's agenda. We have about uh, 35 to 40 minutes, and uh, as you can see, the agenda today is uh, is busy, uh, but as mentioned, exciting. Uh, we have about 150 participants on the call here today. Uh, I do also want to remind you that the webinar here will be recorded, and a link will be shared with you afterwards. So. Uh, uh, keep your pencil sharp, uh, but everything will be shared with you afterwards. What we will do is we will take a quick look at the MERS company and who is Stamco. Then we will look at some of the trends in the logistics industry and why direct-to-store is an important piece of that. Then we will look at the solution in itself uh, and to make it uh, a bit more real and lively, we have two uh, examples, two real customer examples, one from Europe and one from USA. And then at the end we will have some 5-10 minutes for some question and answer session. So who is Damco and, and who is Maersk? Uh, the Maersk group is a big Danish conglomerate. Uh, it's more than 100 years old. It's a rather diversified group. Uh, you will see uh, quite a shipping related activities uh, in there. Uh, Damco, uh, of course, which is one of the leading logistics providers in the world, is under this APM shipping service leg or business unit uh, together uh, with a number of uh, other business units in the MERS group. As we take a closer look at Damco briefly, uh, you can see here that uh, we are a 3PL. Uh, we do cover the entire supply chain in terms of logistics services. Our main focus is on supply chain management, ocean and air products, uh, but we do have a very strong uh, heritage within supply chain development and key account management, working with a number of our uh, leading customers and leading brands and retailers in the world to improve their supply chains. And as we take a look, uh, you can see that we have a wide range of portfolio of customers, and we think this is very fortunate. Uh, we are very excited to have the ability to work with these uh, retailers and lifestyle brands uh, to gain insights, uh, inspiration and cross industry experience. Uh, we think this leads to better supply chains and, and new innovation. And one example is what we will cover today which is the direct to store uh, solution which we have developed with a number of the brands here. So let's get into the actual agenda here. Uh, to, to start uh, and do the scene setting, we came up and we, take, we took a look at what are some of the key drivers for the supply chain and logistics within the supply chain today. And we see three key drivers. We see the first one being e-commerce, which uh, is transforming the entire retail landscape and thereby impacting the international and domestic supply chain. We see control tower and control tower development as, uh, as an area that is setting the standard for the future supply chain management control and also generating new and improved milestones and visibility in the overall supply chain. What we will zoom in on today is another key enabler which is the direct to store. Uh, and this is really something that uh, has developed uh, over the last couple of years and we see as a major future opportunity and game changers in the supply chain. We see the direct to store as an enabler for enhancing speed, reducing inventory uh, and enabling a much more agile supply chain that can react to market changes. So as we progress here, um, I just want to uh, tell you that when we talk to customers today, 
we very often hear uh, that satisfying customer needs continues to be a significant challenge. Uh, customers can interact with retailers and lifestyle brands in many ways. And it can be rather expensive to satisfy these customer needs. We also see that most research uh, and leading institutes today foresee that companies with the most efficient supply chains uh, will win in the marketplace. Uh, this is mainly due to they will have a lower cost base to operate from uh, and they also have the ability to change and react uh, as the market situation changes. Furthermore, we also see an increasingly amount of companies who are trying to grasp and understand how risks can be avoided uh, by deploying several mitigating actions and strategies in their supply chain. Understanding this and looking forward, as we progress during the next approximately 30 minutes, uh, we will try and explain the benefit areas and how direct-to-store can make your supply chain much more efficient. We will especially focus on enabling you uh, so you can grasp the benefit areas uh, when it comes to improved customer service, uh, enhanced operations efficiency, and reducing the risk in your supply chain. So I do hope this resonates very well with you. Uh, and as we move on, I hope you are now uh, a bit more curious and very eager to learn more. Some of you may say, hey, um, I have already considered direct-to-store or I have tried similar concept in the past and it didn't fully work. Or it may also have crossed your mind already that your current IT and operational processes does not fully support uh, a direct-to-store type of solution. Uh, or it could be that you already have, which most of us do have, uh, a list of very urgent priorities. However, I do encourage you uh, to say this is all fine, uh, but please hang in there uh, and stay with us as we go to the agenda. Uh, and I'm certain that you will learn more. Uh, and hopefully you will also see that director store is a key enabler for your supply chain. So as mentioned, uh, over the next 25 minutes, we will zoom in on this direct-to-store solution. We will look at the key components, uh, again, allowing you to fully embrace it. Uh, I would also please ask you to consider what you see here and feel from the perspective of how direct-to-store can be the next big game changers in your supply chain. And finally, as we go to the presentation, please do remember to uh, Keep your pencil sharp, your questions ready, because we will have time for some of them at the end of the session. So with that, uh, I will now hand over the presentation to my co-presenter, Heino Kempers, who will go to the director store specifics. Thank you, uh, Jens. So let's, uh, let's start with a little bit of history. Uh, over time, uh, many international companies uh, closed their local distribution centers and moved their stock to a regional distribution center. These distribution centers began serving the region-wide customers or branches. Distribution centers also expanded their functions. Um, the purpose of the new functions was to provide value-added services to freight. Uh, these acti activities are also known as value-added logistics services, such as uh, customizing and localizing of products, adding components or manuals, testing, uh, quality control, or final assembly. Uh, were then performed at these distribution centers. Later on, also more sophisticated high-end activities, uh, such as postponement manufacturing, were also added. For many, uh, this centralized supply chain structure is still, mo uh, is still the most efficient way to organize distribution. Um, as a response to the increasing complexity of uh, managing more and farther located supply, uh, suppliers, while serving more shattered markets, some companies have rea realized the opportunity to move logistics operations to low-cost countries and centralize the distribution directly from uh, origins. So labor-intensive logistics activities are increasingly being performed at low-cost locations by suppliers themselves or by logistics service providers. Sourcing consolidation platforms operated by these third-party providers are taking the role of the traditional distribution centers. So you can actually say that more and more companies are implementing a new distribution model uh, based on direct shipments from origin to final retailers, stores, or their e-commerce provider. 
bypassing the traditional distribution centers. So this model is, uh, is called direct to store or uh, DC bypass. Uh, and this model exists out of two parts, an upstream part and a downstream part. So at the upstream part of the supply chain, direct to store takes advantage of the sourcing consolidation platforms located in the origins, like for example China or Indonesia, where goods are consolidated and prepared store or customer ready. From there these goods are shipped to its final destination. At the downstream, downstream part of the supply chain, uh, shipments bypass the traditional distribution center and supported by cross-docking reach directly the final destination, which can be a customer's regional distribution center or store. So if we have a look at the benefits, and we touch upon that uh, later on as well, then direct to store improves the overall product velocity as it allows cargo to flow directly to store bypassing the uh, regional DCs. Uh, it reduces the amount of international, uh, by reducing the amount of international shipping and inland haulage moves at destination, CO2 emissions are reduced. And the model supports uh, make to order flow based on actual demand, allowing companies to support direct uh, shipments from the origin to customer, uh, based on customer orders. So you can actually say that direct to store uh, is an alternative to centralized distribution that is loose, used by a lot of companies today. So companies that benefit, benefit from the uh, direct-to-store distribution model typically use both, both the distribution models and use the direct-to-store model for uh, specific cargo flows. And also we will touch upon that in a little bit. So it's important uh, to realize that if you want to benefit from the direct to store model, uh, you should be able to allocate bulk orders to customer orders early in the supply chain. The more accurate the demand forecast, the later the inventory allocation can take place. Uh, this is of course not a, a challenge if companies are able to place their orders uh, with their suppliers based on customer orders directly. So let's have a closer look at uh, both models. Uh, on the right side of the slide, uh, you will see centralized uh, distribution model. Uh, in case of this centralized distribution model, deliveries from suppliers and tra are transported to a central location, usually in full load quantities, rather than each store or customer. Loads are then consolidated um, from a number of suppliers and delivered to the store, ideally in uh, single full loads. Logistics operations like pick and pack or making the order shop ready are uh, typically performed at the destination in the regional DCs. In case of direct to store, uh, deliveries from several suppliers are consolidated at, at a consolidation center at the origin, like already mentioned earlier, so close to the suppliers. Value added logistics services like uh, quality checks, Making the order uh, store ready, co-packing, labeling and consolidation can be, can be performed at the consolidation center at origin. With as a result that the orders can directly be shipped to a store. Uh, deconsolidation of containers at destination is required. For example, uh, when a, a container carries products for several stores or customers, or when the, the, the product final destination doesn't have the capabilities to receive an ocean container. Sometimes this process only involves transloading uh, of the cargo from, from ocean container to truck load. And sometimes it may involve cross-docking of the cargo to prepare shipments. Deconsolidation uh, of direct-to-store containers may lead to full truck loads, but it can also be that it leads to less than full truck loads or partial loads. So let's have a closer look uh, at what a typical direct to store implementation looks like. Um, so just we, we follow the, the numbers on the slide uh, and we, we follow the, uh, the illustration from, uh, from left to right. So uh, companies place their orders with their suppliers and send a copy of this order to, uh, to their logistics service provider. Uh, a vendor management program uh, provided by an LSP ensures that suppliers uh, deliver according to, uh, to plan um, that is created 
uh, typically by the logistics service provider. So based on the order information and well-defined business, uh, business rules that has been agreed between uh, the company and the logistics service providers, the shipments plans are created and the instructions uh, based on the plan are shared with the suppliers and cargo is delivered to the consolidation center or port of loading uh, based on the, uh, on the plan. So at the uh, consolidation center, uh, close to the suppliers, uh, the LSP uh, uh, logistics service provider consolidates the cargo based on these, uh, uh, these well-defined business rules and um, logistics services such as quantity checks, store ready packaging, barcode labeling and scanning and outer and inner carding level or at uh, outer and inner carding level well, can be provided at, uh, at these locations. So once all the items are consolidated into container loads or air freight shipments, uh, transportation is arranged uh, to the final destination. So at the destination, uh, shipments can be uh, checked and deconsolidated at the de de deconsolidation center, typically managed by, uh, by a logistics service provider. Uh, since a lot of value-added uh, logistics services um, are already taken care of, uh, there's no need to, uh, to flow the shipments to the company's DC. In case there's still need, a need to, to provide uh, logistics uh, value-added services at the destination, then these can be performed at the de deconsolidation center. So from this location, the orders are delivered directly to the customer's DC or store uh, or are held for later delivery. So as the entire model is actually operated by one logistics service provider, uh, end, to end visibility of the orders can be provided throughout the entire supply chain. And this visibility typi is typically available to all relevant stakeholders. So let's have a look at the benefits that the direct-to-store model will, will bring. So a direct-to-store model can provide visibility on movements of each order from start to end. So depending on the specific business parameters, it's even possible to track a shipment on in-store date, so no more surprises or half-informed decisions. In implementing the direct-to-store concept, so bypassing the regional DC and deliver the orders directly to the store, will result in labor cost savings and will save storage space at the DC. Uh, as typically the logistics value-added services are executing, executed at a consolidation center at the origin, companies will also benefit from the lower uh, processing cost. Um, some companies choose to apply the direct-to-store model only, for, uh, only uh, or mainly to handle their seasonal freight flows. And the main reason for doing this is uh, that it will take away pressure from their own DCs during these periods. Another benefit uh, or spin-off is that due to the more efficient destination distribution model that comes with direct-to-store, um, uh, uh, significant carbon emission reductions uh, uh, are delivered. And last but not least, and most probably uh, for a lot of companies, uh, the, mo the key benefit of the direct-to-store model is that the concept will improve the product velocity sig uh, significantly. Um, the improved product uh, velocity uh, and some of the other direct-to-store elements will also result in a supply chain, uh, will also result in supply chain cost and cost of capital reductions. So there are actually three product categories that are most suitable to be handled by the direct-to-store model. So that are uh, time-sensitive products, so products uh, whose value diminishes or expires within a period of time, products with specific uh, characteristics, and seasonal products. So if you look at time-sensitive products, um, these mainly benefit from the improved uh, product velocity. Uh, examples of uh, product, products in these categories are fresh products like uh, food and flowers. Um, 
it's it's important to realize that this most probably requires the most uh, advanced implementation of the direct to store model as in most cases the entire supply chain is temperature controlled um, another example of a time sensitive product is the, uh, are the trendy items that are quickly old fashioned like certain electronics or clothes um, promotions so uh, product uh, product launches or, or things you want to hand out at fairs or, or other uh, uh, events and uh, last but not least the uh, collectibles uh, the second category uh, products with specific characteristics um, examples of, uh, of products with the within this category are products with a high unit value like a jewelry or uh, products with a high volume and then I'm talking about the, the, the the size of the product and weight. Uh, products with a high unit value benefit from the reduced time to market. Uh, I think that's obvious. And and when it comes to these these products, I think typically DCs are not designed to handle these products uh, with a high volume or high weight. They are optimized for their standards uh, for the standard uh, uh, product flows. Um, so uh, that's why companies prefer not to handle those uh, products uh, in their own DC. And last but not least, uh, seasonal products. Um, time sensitive products typically have a high volume of sales uh, in a short period of time. Uh, direct to store distribution reduces the need for extra DC capacity for this short period of time. Examples of products within this category are uh, seasonal uh, sports products. Uh, and and all the products with a uh, with a high volume uh, in a short period of time, like periods like uh, Christmas, back to school, Black Friday, Valentine's Day. So we explained direct to store, and and let's have a look at, at two examples, uh, customer examples, uh, like Jens already mentioned uh, before. An example from Europe and an example from uh, from the USA. So let's start with a European example. So this case study is about a multi-brand retailer, uh, predominantly importing from Asia to Europe. Uh, this retailer has uh, two regional DCs in Europe, uh, and to. to, to to, to, before they actually started to implement, they, they decided to, to first do a pilot um, and they selected three customers uh, from one of their brands uh, to, to run this pilot. Um, the customers were actually selected on, on their volume uh, and the locations where they were at. Uh, the expected annual volume for the pilot was uh, uh, over 6,000 6, pallets. Um, 115,000 uh, cartons and, and almost 1.4 million units. So, in the old situation, um, cargo was shipped to to Bremerhaven. It's a, it's a port in Germany uh, by ocean carrier, uh, and from this port in Germany, the cargo was railed to the European DC in the Czech Republic. From this DC, all cargo was trucked to the United Kingdom, where the customers are, are based. Uh, and the total distance the cargo traveled at the destination was around uh, 2,500 kilometers. In the new situation, so the situation where they, uh, where they implemented direct to store, or actually direct to customer, so it was actually delivering directly to the customer's uh, DC, the cargo is shipped uh, from Asia to the port of Rotterdam, and from the port of Rotterdam it's put on a barge that takes it to a deconsolidation center based in Belgium. From this uh, logistics service provider's deconsolidation center, the cargo is trucked uh, directly to the customers. So in this situation, the cargo travels uh, a bit more than 1,000 kilometers, which is uh, 1,500 kilometers less than in the previous situation. So let's have a closer look at the solution that's been implemented. And again, from left to right. Um, 
So the retailer uh, places an order with their supplier and sends a copy to the logistics service provider who is managing their logistics. Um, this information is used by the logistics service provider for planning purposes. Um, with support of decision trees uh, agreed with the retailer, um, the logistics service provider uh, consolidates uh, the cargo and ships it to the European uh, to the uh, uh, to, to the deconsolidation center and from there directly to the to the customer. Um, the implementation of this solution uh, uh, resulted in a, in, a, in a lead time reduction of approximately uh, 11 days and besides lead time reduction the solution also uh, generated a uh, 200,000 euro annual inventory saving for this pilot only. Um, the solution also increased the stock trends from 9% to 30% and last but not least an impressive COD, CO2 reduction of approximately 50% uh, as a result of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the amount of uh, kilometers uh, that were saved. So let's have a look at a, a US example. Um, so the second case study is about an American retailer uh, servicing over 500 stores in the US. Um, all, of their, all, all of their international and most of their domestically resourced uh, products are moved into either a West Coast or an East Coast cross dock facility run by a logistics service provider. And both facilities uh, have a fully automated deconsolidation setup. Um, the interesting aspect of this case study is that they uh, place their orders uh, based on sales forecasts, so not based on customer orders. Um, and the products are uh, the product is prepacked and labeled uh, with a unique bulk uh, label, and are made store ready before they arrive at the cross dock facility. Um, they have implemented the delayed allocation process, allowing a bulk order to be merged with store level needs. Uh, with other words, products that are on their way to the cross dock center can be allocated to a store and, and then further on uh, directly be uh, transported to the, uh, to the stores from the deconsolidation center. And the implementation of the model delivered a five day uh, lead time reduction and besides that it also reduced the operation, uh, operating cost with approximately 10%. Okay, thanks a lot Heino for uh, taking us to the direct-to-store solution and to uh, customer examples here. With that, uh, we do want to summarize uh, our, uh, our presentation and, and take you back just to some of the key call-outs here. So, um, as we said, we started out looking at what were the major trends in, in supply chain management. Uh, we briefly discussed e-commerce, control tower, and then we zoomed in on the direct-to-store. So we saw how that can be an alternative and complementary model to a centralized distribution. Uh, it can be specific to product groups or specific to certain customer or specific to certain stores, depending on whether you are a brand or a retailer. We also looked at how some of these value-added services and pre-pack and ready-to-store um, solutions and preparation work could be done at origin. If forecasting is good and uh, your specific business model allows you to do that. Alternatively, uh, some of these uh, activities can be done at destination in a deconsolidation or as it's also called a cross dock facility. Uh, and finally, we looked at some uh, products uh, and seasonality which would be more suitable than others. Uh, we also saw how uh, the benefit uh, uh, were materialized and uh, to summarize uh, again uh, typically again we talk about product velocity we talk about uh, carbon footprint uh, and we also look at how capacity can be planned better so uh, another way to look at this is to say how how exactly does direct to store uh, enhance your customer service in terms of inventory allocation to important customers generating more predictability predictability and speed in your supply chain. 
It also makes your operation more efficient. Uh, it reduces the overall need for inventory. Uh, we saw some examples how lead time was uh, reduced tremendously. And we also uh, could see how the direct cost related to transportation and product handling were reduced. And finally, uh, as we speed up the processes and we operate more accurately and we become more demand driven given the direct store or customer demands uh, and maneuvering around peak capacity constraints, we take out a lot of risk in the supply chain hence reduces the need for markdowns and having obsolete inventory in our warehouses. So this was the key call out from, from our presentation today. If you have a desire to learn more, and uh, some of us uh, do for sure, uh, we have a, a couple of additional areas where you can find information. Uh, you can subscribe to our uh, Retail Logistics Guru. Uh, which will give you daily news around what is uh, interesting and exciting in the world of supply chain, uh, big brands and retail. Uh, at our webpage, you can also find blogs and white papers uh, in this area. We have a whole e-guide in, uh, in all the trends uh, and but that typically also a few challenges in retail logistics. Uh, and finally, as mentioned, uh, this uh, webinar will also be recorded and it will be sent to you upon request. So here are four areas uh, or sources uh, where you can find more. With that, uh, we have reached uh, the uh, end of the, uh, the formal uh, webinar session, and we now have some time for, for the questions. Let me just remind you how this will work. Uh, you are, of course, um, uh, invited to submit your questions, and it's done via the chat pane, which is located at the bottom of the sidebar on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, please make sure as you type in your question, you remember to send it to send question to staff before you click the send button, otherwise we will not see it. Um, and with that, I will just pause for a second to see uh, what type of questions we will receive. And I can see we uh, we have uh, we have a question coming in. I think. Uh, well, Heino, maybe you take the first one. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Jens. Uh, the first question: um, How does DC bypass uh, reduce the CO2 footprint of my supply chain? Yeah, I think we already quickly touched upon that during during the presentation. Um, I think the 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 the, uh, the key driver of of reducing the CO2 uh, footprint is uh, is the more efficient distribution you do at destination, uh, where with a DC setup, uh, you, you you typically ship the, the the goods to the DC and from there to the final customer, where with uh, with DC bypass you 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 directly ship it from the port, maybe via a cross dock center, but then immediately immediately to the customer, and like with the uh, with the example we showed, the European example, you can see that at will result in significant uh, benefit. Okay, the next question, uh, Jens, this is maybe a nice one for you. <laughs> um, it was mentioned that direct store uh, reduces the cost of capital. Could you explain what drives this reduction? Uh, yeah, let me uh, let me try and, uh, and cover that one. Um, what we're talking about here will be mainly balance sheet items. Um, so what we see typically uh, with our customers who implement direct-to-store is that they need to invest less in inventory overall. Uh, and why is that? Uh, there's a couple of drivers of that. Uh, one thing is that they can quickly, uh, they being the customers, quickly allocate inventory either at origin and then in a final allocation at destination to the specific stores or customers. So you need less overall inventory to satisfy the sales and, and customer needs. Uh, it becomes more predictable in that way. Uh, the other key item is that you need less inventory days. Uh, simply by compressing the lead time, so making it faster and more efficient to route uh, the right inventory to the relevant stores that has the customer demand, we cut out lead time. And we showed examples here of five days 
uh, and another one where it was up to 14 days uh, for the European customer example. And that is quite dramatic uh, lead time reduction and, and inventory reductions. Um, we also gave some examples of, of how by bypassing uh, the DC at destination you, you can do less handling and less transportation cost. Uh, that be a truck move, that be a warehouse pick and pack and so on. And that, of course, lower cost also allows you to invest less in your inventory and reduce your, your overall um, uh, cost. Finally, which was maybe not so obvious from uh, the presentation, uh, but I wanted to share this as well, is that uh, a direct -to store does not require any CapEx investment. Um, why is that? The reason being that in our experience, again, you don't need to invest in additional warehouse or warehouse space. You don't need any expensive IT systems and setups. Uh, we typically work with what you have available already, and we use the new insights uh, from the data and the processes to simply drive a more efficient product flow direct to stores. So, so these would be the areas of where we typically see our customers reducing the cost of capital in their supply chain. So um, that was good we got that question. Thank you, Jens. Uh, should we take sure. one more question? Uh, looking at time, yes. Let's take one more. OK. Um, OK, then. OK, we'll take this one. Uh, does the model also result in supply chain inefficiencies? Um, yeah. I think maybe one of the Things, at the, one of the things that I can come up with is that direct shipments um, are often smaller than shipments from a primary DC. Uh, so that you can say that that will result in, in less efficient ship it, shipping and yeah, may mean that the customer does not receive its full order in a single uh, shipment. So um, it might even increase the number of uh, receipts a customer has to make. Uh, but still, uh, substantial savings in transportation uh, and carbon emissions and the improved velocity, in my view, still outweighs the disadvantages. Yeah. I think that's also clearly what we have seen with <clears throat> all the customers that has uh, implemented direct to store. So, um, yeah. Um, okay, uh, with this last question, uh, I would like to conclude the webinar. Um, we haven't been able to address uh, all the questions that was put forward, so uh, what we will do is uh, we will answer those directly via email afterwards here. So thanks again. It was not in vain. Uh, you put forward those questions, uh, and we will get to those uh, uh, as soon as possible. Thank you very much, everyone, for your attention and your questions and your participation in today's webinar. And we wish you all a pleasant day and a very good evening. Thank you.